Whoosh. Hey everyone, Alien Neela here. So I've come into a problem with my filaments absorbing water from the air. Living in Florida, it's very humid here, so I started looking into dry boxes. And one of my biggest problems with dry boxes is that it, most of them hold multiple rolls. Like, I think I saw one that had two or three, most of them had four to six or higher. And I just wanted to hold one. So I can have, it may be a little more expensive because you have to get the boxes, but... I just want one so I can grab the one put it next to my printer roll the or thread the filament to the extruder so on but I haven't really found too many that just have one so I came up with an idea to get a dry cereal box that you know it's plastic and seals it's air sealed so we're going to try that today and we're going to make a dry box for a single roll of filament. So these are the parts that I'm using. This is the cereal dry box that I purchased off of Amazon. I will link that below the video. And this is just big enough to fit the roll of filament. And there'll be plenty of space. And one cool thing is right here you've got this little dip that goes in. And it's just wide enough to put a little bit of friction on the roll, which solves another problem I was having. My rolls were unwinding while I was printing. So we're going to go with this. And then we've got this cutter so I can kind of deburr the hole. I don't have a, a deburr. So we've got the, the tube. These are the holders that I'm going to glue inside the dry box for the rod to go into. And then this is a cap for the tube. Six millimeter drill bit. I've got the fitting here for the tube to go in. I'm gonna drill a hole and screw it into the plastic. And then we've got the threaded rod. These are the bearings that I used. This printed part I will provide a link to. I came up with this. Mine cracked because this was version one. Version two I made the inner holes a little wider but for this one I just shoved the bearings in and they cracked a little bit but it still holds I've been using it for a couple months now and so let's go ahead and get started so what I've started off with I got a 4 inch 5 16th bolt and I've cut it down to three and a half inches obviously cutting off the head so that is what I measured to be a good fit for the box. We're going to take first these pieces here and then once we get those glued in we'll be cooking with Crisco. Get this stuff out of the way. Alright so on our cereal box we're gonna have to figure out where exactly to put these. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick the filament in. I'm kind of going to guesstimate where exactly I want these. got our marks now what we're going to want to do is glue these holder caps to the inside here so I'm gonna go ahead and get my trusty old rubber cement So while those are drying, I'm going to go ahead and put together 
the spool. Now again, these are printed parts. I will put a link to my Thingiverse for them to print them out. Like I said, version 2 has a little bit bigger diameter, so they push in a lot easier. I have them on my other spool at the moment. But you just take the bearings. These are 8 millimeter in the center, 7 millimeter tall, 22 millimeters. What is that, diameter? I think radius is in diameters across, right? Who knows? Um, so anyways, just push those in. Then you grab your spool and put it in there. We're going to, what do I do with the bolt? pretty easy you got about four millimeters on each side that will go into the holders and then also while we're waiting to dry we could probably go ahead and get the fitting in I really need to get a mount for this camera so let's see where we want our filament to come out of I think I'm going to have my filament come out the top, probably back here, so it'll come up and go to my extruder. Alright, so we don't really need to measure, you um, just need to decide where you want your tube or your filament to come out of. Now this is a 6 millimeter fitting, it's supposed to be 6 millimeter. Um, I did do this with a 6 millimeter drill bit and it was too loose. So I'm coming down to a 5.5 millimeter drill bit. And then we're also going to want to get our O-ring. Some of these fittings come with O-rings. This one did not, so I went and bought some from Lowe's. And I'm just going to push that on there. Okay, and again, we don't really need to measure where you want this to come out of. Now when you're drilling this, don't put too much pressure on the plastic because the plastic will crack or can crack. I've not seen it will. So just drill it and be careful not to crack your plastic. Alright, doesn't look like I have any burring in there, so that's pretty cool. There's a little bit on the inside. And then we're going to take our fitting and screw this in here. That's a lot better. Like I said, I used a 5.5 millimeter drill bit. And it is working great. It's a nice snug fit in there. And it's pushing the O-ring down to seal that. Let's get in there a little more. There we go. Alright, and then we can just, whatever amount of PFTE tube that you want to use. This one's probably about over a foot long. I'm actually going to cut it down because I don't want a lot of tube to come out. Some people run it all the way to their extruder. I'm just going to do, you know, about four, five inches. And this side's a little chewed up. I think I used it for something else. Cut that off. And we're just going to stick our tube in here, and that's what we will feed our filament through. So you just push it in as far as you can. Now this is a pressure clamp. You might want to print out a clamp that will go under here, so it will hold that in a little better. But as long as that's on there, that's not coming out. So and the reason I only use... What do I do with the cap? There it is. So again, I only used about 4 inches or so, and then... I have a cap that you can also download from my Thingiverse that will go on there. So the theory is, I'm going to, when I'm done printing and not using it anymore, I'm going to push the filament back through to where it's in here and then cap it off. So let me check on the dryness of those caps and I'll be right back. Alright, so my caps, they're still a tiny bit sticky. For the most part, you want them uh, kind of dry to wish all the tackiness is, is off of them. 
um, but just a little bit of stickiness isn't going to bother me any. So what we want to do is stick our caps back in here. Now I know this video is probably not the best quality, best production, and I'm doing it unscripted. <laughs> And I don't really have a mount and everything, but you know what? I look at Tom. I can't. I'm gonna butcher his last name. San, Sandlanderer. Um, his videos from a few years ago. I mean, he. They were a little sketchy as well. So I hope my quality gets better. And as good as his over the years. As I, you follow me on these endeavors. So there we go. I'm going to let that set for just a few minutes before I put the filament in. Okay, so I have my spool holders aligned now. Um, but there's one step that I forgot that I want to do before I put the spool in. And that is the silica gel. Now, the desiccant is what absorbs the moisture in the air so that it's not being absorbed by your filament. This is orange indicating gel it actually turns green i believe uh, when it's saturated and you can actually reactivate it by putting it in the microwave for 10 minutes on defrost or 30 percent power or whatever and so i'm i don't know exactly how much to put into the box but what i'm going with is one cup so I'm going to put one cup of, oh wow, that's a little messy, they bounce, be careful. I'm going to put one cup of this stuff, that's a lot, maybe I could have went with half a cup, you know. So I'm going to put one cup of gel beads into the bottom here to absorb the water. And we're getting sound effects from my two-year-old. And, uh... Then, we're going to put the spool in here. Just put it around backwards. I guess it doesn't really matter which direction it goes into, but I did make one of the sides a little longer, just because of the alignment. You make sure they're both in there all right so this comes this slides pretty easily i don't know why it's making so much noise it's, i think that's the plastic on the spool making the noise and then we're going to wind this back up and feed it through the tube see and that's why you need a pressure clip because this tube comes out if you don't have one this is supposed to you push it down and then you pull it up and it's supposed to pressurize and not come out. Anyways, so we're going to get the filament and run it through the tube. Now this lid has a rubber seal around it. Two-year-old's playing with his truck, so they're talking right now. And uh, clip this on. All the clamps are down. Gonna, now I'm going to push this back through because I'm not going to use it right now. Put the cap on. And there we go. We have a single filament roll dry box. And I am going to actually start printing some of my barrels and crates that I'm going to sell on Amazon with this filament so i'm gonna go hook this up to my printer and finish off this video i just want to give a, a quick update before my actual use so i can inform you guys so the rubber cement contact cement glue that i was using uh, apparently it was no good um, it's probably been sitting way too long because i've had it for years so instead I tried E6000 or 600, I think it's E6000 glue, and it held really good to the printed part, 
but it didn't hold to the inside of the cereal cereal dry box so I had to scuff it up as you can see and then additionally I figured that the spool if, if you look on this here it it's wider at the top and it gets more narrow towards the bottom so the spool near the bottom part was rubbing just a little too much on these dips and it was causing too much friction so I also moved these up about a half an inch I think before we did it at uh, four and a half inches and now I have it just before uh, one handed just before the four inch mark so I moved it up and now the top of the filament roll is just below this top lip that way it'll give it the most room away from this so next time I do this I will possibly look for more rectangular boxes that don't have that slanting in at the bottom but I need to let this E6000 glue dry for 24 hours so it really sets in and now that I scuffed up the plastic it should stick pretty well I used my where is it <clears throat> used my Dremel tool and just you know scuffed it up some so that's where we're at right now hopefully the next part of this video will be the ending with me showing you it working thanks all right so it's been 24 hours actually it hasn't really been 24 hours it's probably been like I don't know 15 hours but anyways the uh, this clips there are holding great um, I've got a lot better movement now on this so moving that up was a really good idea um, I'm gonna wind this back up and I'm not using my white filament anymore because overnight I printed all the stuff that I wanted to print for my Etsy and Amazon shops um, so I'm going to find something cool to print now and well not that the stuff that I made isn't cool but um, I want to you know probably print out a toy for my kid or something but I think that this has turned out really awesome I'm gonna put the top lock on and see if I can do this one-handed. Well, all right, actually I could not get it together one-handed, so I went ahead and put it together off camera and I have the filament going up to my extruder and it is uncurling rather easily. So I think we've got a success here. Um, I am probably going to plan a version two, however, because like I said, I'm not happy with the box that I used uh, because of that slanted uh, bottom part but I mean it's sealed it's got the desiccant in there and uh, it's feeding fine so I'm gonna go ahead and print something out um, thank you guys for joining me for this tutorial video and I'll have something else up for you Soon. Again, thank you for joining me for this video. If you guys could, check out my Patreon link. Um, subscribe to me here on YouTube. Hit the little bell button so you can get notifications when I post new stuff. Hit me up on Twitter. I've got my Amazon and Etsy shop up now. And my website, alien3d.us. Check me out. Appreciate it. Share it. Thanks.